please a warm open group welcome for Cheryl McKernan. So good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation from the open group and for Soup for inviting me. Um, it's my privilege to be here amongst all of these lovely faces. You make me nervous. So if I get a little shaky and my southern accent comes out, you know what's going on. All right. This has been a really long journey. I know our company has been tracking supply chain since 2005, which is approximately when that picture was taken that you saw up there. But it's my favorite, and I'm sticking to it. All right. The history goes, uh, you know, I, I was invited to talk about what the process is and what the value proposition is for me and my company. I wanted to go into a little bit more detail of the journey to get here. So back in 2005 was when I first was introduced to the issues surrounding counterfeit equipment when the FAR Council invited everybody into Bethesda, Maryland, and they start bringing up all of these counterfeit pictures of various OEMs, and there was a conflict between what was actually counterfeit and what was not, you know, what's a warranty. So this has gone through an evolution over time. So back in 2009, the government came to the Open Group and said, hey, we've got to do something about this. As the government's moving away from GOTS products to COTS products, they needed some way to help to ensure that the equipment that they were getting was not counterfeit. There were bills going up into Congress that were going to cost tens of millions of dollars in penalties, and everybody's throwing up their hands going, wait a minute, wait a minute, you still haven't clearly defined what counterfeit equipment is. So again, they had to go through this whole evolution. So when we heard of the ISO IEC 20243 coming about, we were first. We were trying to find a way to give our company the golden stamp of approval that we're already here. We're already doing everything that NIST says. We're already doing what our OEMs want us to do. And getting that certification was really, it, we just had to do it, right? OK. So I'm going to move on. Whoa. All right, sorry about that. That was a huge jump. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the process. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the certification, what it's done for us, and then what's next. Fair? All right. All right. When you make a determination that you're going to go after this certification, there's some, some decisions that you have to make, right? You can do a self-certification, or you can do a third-party accreditation. Right. CVWG chose to do the self-certification. It was low cost, and that was a starter. Because every company has to go out, and they have to develop a budget of what they're going to do for the year. And if all of a sudden you come in and you find this new opportunity that you have to have it, it's not necessarily in the budget. That third-party certification or accreditation process tends to be a little bit more pricey. So CVWG chose to go for the low cost option, it was, it was $4,000 for us. It, we d you have to make a decision of what are you going to certify? Are you going to certify a product? Are you going to certify a product line? Are you going to certify a business unit? Those kinds of things. CDWG opted to uh, certify for the entire business unit of CDWG. Okay. It's a four document process. The most time you will spend is on the, cr the certification, uh, excuse me, the conformance statement. Sorry about that. So this is where you basically have to be very honest with yourself and look at your processes and procedures and clearly identify it. CVWG started the process, and we started talking about the process in December of 2016. We had a lot of conversation. We had to figure out, wait a minute, where are the gaps? We went through and identified, here are all of our processes. Here are the things that we need to work on. While going through the processes, these are the things that we can fix. Fix them. We did. So well, we went through the process. We turned in all the documents. There were some system glitches on the open group side since we were the first. They, there were some anomalies they hadn't quite figured out yet, which have since been fixed. And we were awarded the certification in May of 2017. Not 
not, not a bad gig. Right? Okay. The next thing you have to do is marketplace awareness. It's marketing. Everybody's got to market it. Once you get it, you just don't sit on it. This is your golden stamp of approval that you know what you are doing. The whole idea behind the ISO certification is to ensure that there's no malicious intent in incorporating counterfeit product into the products that we sell because when you do that, things go really badly. Okay. I saw a recent news story. How many are here from the Washington, D.C. area? Hands up. Ooh, you may have seen this news story. Thank you very much. You may have seen this. There was a first-time surgery to repair a young girl's scoliosis in the Rest Reston Hospital. Anybody see that? All right, you know what I'm talking about. All of this, the surgeon was fantastic. I found out afterwards that the surgery went really, really well, so don't let me scare you to death. But this was all done by a robotic arm and all the software that goes around it to really navigate where every bracket and every screw goes. And if one piece of that technology went bad, as a parent, I'm freaking out. What's going to happen if something glitches in that robotic arm? That that's my daughter on a table. Things go bad when you have bad technology. And this is what this certification helps you do to show that to golden stamp of approval to your federal government customers. Right? It labels you as a trusted supplier. It gives you the opportunity to sit at the table with your government customer and go, look, I'm good. There are some bad players out there. I'm not one of them. I have this certification. I've already been accredited. Here's my golden stamp that says, you don't need to look any farther. If you want to come in, check out my processes, okay. You have the right to do that. But I'm telling you, I'm, I've already done it for you. Right? It also helps our, our OEMs, our manufacturing partners. Because the worst thing that can happen to them is that their brand name and the integrity of their brand name gets demolished because somebody did something wrong. If there's a, a bad actor out there selling counterfeit equipment that they're labeling, I'll just I'll use the name Cisco. You can name any of them, NetApp, you know, Nutanix, whatever. If they're selling a counterfeit product and claiming it is this OEM, it doesn't necessarily go back to that bad actor. It goes back to that OEM that it's their product that was messed up. So the last thing my OEM wants is me going out and selling counterfeit equipment and their, their brand goes down the toilet. So I can actually comfortably sit in front of my, man, my manufacturers and go, we're good. I've been certified. I have the certifications to take your product. I know where to buy it from. I know how to transport it. I know how to integrate it. And I'm not going to mess up the, the integrity of your brand name. Right? Right? <laughs> okay. All righty. This also helps us to align with our government partners. Right? We, we all want to make sure that nothing goes bad. We don't want things falling out of the sky. We don't want things blowing up. We don't, you know, these are our taxpayers' dollars because every time something goes wrong, it's our taxpayers' dollars that pay for it, all right? So what's next? I've got it. I know there's a few of you that have the certification. Are you in the room? All right. Congratulations. All right. Don't stop here. Look, technology evolves. You go back to manufacturing. There's so much robotics in manufacturing now. It used to be people sitting behind the desk and screwing stuff in and welding. It doesn't happen that way anymore. Delivery changes. We've got drones delivering stuff to our front door, right? So things change. Regulations change. 
So you need to stay focused. Keep your eye on the ball. Don't stop here. Things continue to change. Be aware of them. Stay on top of them. All right? It's a journey. It's a long journey. Talking about delivery of products, delivery of things on your doorstep, you want to go back to the future and go to the Star Trek days and go, hey, Scotty, beam me up. <laughs> Maybe one day that'll happen. I don't know. I'm just saying. When you go back, when you went back to Disney World and saw all the technology back in the 1960s where, oh, somebody's actually talking to their mother on their cell phone and seeing their face. It's here now. Things change. They evolve. Those things that we saw on TV or that were futuristic are here now and today. Who knows where they're going to be tomorrow? That's it. Slido, please keep going with uh, with Slido. Um, yeah, several questions for you. Thank you very much. It was nice to hear the uh, point of view from the other side of the, uh, yeah. the fence. So, uh, You're welcome. what it's like from uh, to actually go through the process, and that's really what these questions uh, questions are about. Um, I guess it's what's involved in certification from a soup contract holder's point of view. I mean, you kind of described the product standard, but you know, what's involved in getting certified um, under the OTTBS program is the question oh, okay. rather than so. Uh, so um, if you go out to the Open Group website, there is a list of uh, documents that you have to prepare. It's really four documents, and as the slides indicated, I didn't go into each one. Um, you have to complete them, and you have to do a self-certification process. I am unfamiliar with the third-party accreditation process, but I have been through several other accreditation processes that can be quite intense and, and costly. But I would assume, and maybe you can answer that question better than I can, about the third-party certification. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's actually a separate question on that, is, um, is, is relative time frames for those. I mean, we, we are going to hear more about the, um, the third-party one a bit, a bit later, but um, for now, can you speak to the time frame from start to finish? I think you did mention it in your presentation. Yes, sir. Um, so again, when we started the conversation, it was December of 2016, and we were awarded the certification in May of 2017. And I think depending on how deep you want to go and how many things that you need to certify or um, address in your conformance statement, that really depends on you. But for us, it seemed like a pretty quick process. So six months, I would say, you know, for a company my size was a pretty reasonable time frame, but I think it can be accelerated. Okay, thank you. Um, did you find that you had to, did your organization find that you had to create policies in order to meet the requirements? The policies were already there. We, what we really needed to do was refine some of the processes. So there were some gaps in the process that we quickly cleaned up and were able to feel very comfortable. Um, does CDWG partner with small businesses to jointly market on government opportunities requiring OTTPS certifications? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, so typically, the way we're organized is by customer set. So if you have an opportunity that you're working for a particular customer, we would engage. You, you could engage with the uh, account manager, or you can send some, you know, a question to me, and I can direct you in the right. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a question that's involved. There's some duplicates here. Um, the policy question we asked. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Has it made has it made a difference um, to you that this has been recognised as an ISO standard? Absolutely. I don't know how best to answer that other than say absolutely. Again, it gives us the credibility to sit in front of our government customers and talk to them, and they're assured, they're comfortable talking to us. That is so important these days. Uh, that's all the questions we have, so you must have... Uh, oh, no, 
sorry, one's just come in. Uh -oh. Late breaking news. <laughs> Uh, what was the size of the team CDW used for the uh, OTTBS process? Literally, well, it, it, it takes a village, to be quite honest with you, but the primary team actually completing the conformance statement was only three people. But those three people touch another 10 to 20 people. You, t you have to talk to everybody within your organization and make sure that everyone understands exactly what we're, what we're doing and making sure that they're trained on those kinds of things. So the organization as a whole is 8,600 people, but we've got, but the per, the people completing the certification and going through the process was primarily three people, myself included. And the final question <laughs> that came in kind of the same time: Did you use an ISO consulting firm to walk you through the process? No, we did not. Great, thank you. Cheryl, we're going to leave it there. Um, okay. Thank you very, very much for your 